The tobacco industry has a long track record of marketing to uh, black Americans. The tobacco companies targeted my friends, my neighbors, the whole neighborhood to buy menthol cigarettes. It worked. My mother got hooked on menthol cigarettes at a, at a young age, and she died at 54. When I think of the ill effects of tobacco, I think first about my family. Uh, I think about those that, that we lost prematurely. I watched the devastating effects that it had on my brother's life. When you have a product of death, uh, you have to continue to replenish uh, your quote unquote customers. Uh, and so these same aggressive tactics that have been going on uh, for 50, 60 years. Lung disease, heart disease, uh, diabetes, uh, and, and um, maternal health. The health equity piece of this is critically important. I, I think the reason why we need a ban on flavored tobacco products, including menthol cigarettes, uh, is that it's no longer about the profits of big tobacco. It's about people's lives. A ban would help improve the health outcomes for the African American population, and it's been demonstrated over and over again when smoking is prohibited, when there's less access to tobacco products, people stop smoking. The tobacco industry is trying to play uh, Jedi mind tricks on folks and take the illogical uh, and try to make it seem logical. That somehow um, uh, getting rid of flavored uh, cigarettes or menthol is somehow discriminatory <laughs> to African Americans. No, you are discriminating against black people by targeting uh, this particular community in this way. So if you're committed to racial equity, ban menthol. There are 45,000 preventable deaths within the African-American community due to tobacco-related products every year. We could work on uh, an ordinance in the city of Columbus to ban the sale of menthol cigarettes and flavored tobacco products. I was really proud of the way uh, the community stepped up, put kids first, uh, so that cities like Columbus and others uh, could take action to protect kids. We hope that this resolution coming out of the Conference of Mayors will help us get that message out there and let's hope everybody moves forward with it. I think we have a responsibility to put people before politics uh, and, and in that responsibility we owe them truth uh, and so we have to stand boldly for what is right. I would tell other leaders, do not be confused by the industry. The industry has never had our interest at heart. If you look at the disproportionate rates of cancer and heart disease, and you have the tobacco industry coming and saying, oh, we better keep menthol out there or it's going to increase mass incarceration, I mean, that really is laughable and very insulting. This is our time to step up as, as leaders of our cities to protect our children that are vulnerable to a lot of these big corporations that want, bottom line, make a profit. It's the right thing to do at the United States Conference of Mayors to pass a resolution to protect kids from tobacco and flavored tobacco. And we want to send that message nationally. We want to send it together. So this isn't Democrat, this isn't Republican. And having mayors from all over the country, uh, all parties, making that statement is powerful. This should clearly signal to the Biden-Harris administration that we've got your back and we want this done. I'm not afraid of tobacco companies. I didn't get into this job to be scared of anyone. <laughs>